so I can see all the live viewers. This is really cool. Are we live? Yeah. Ha! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the movement. This is Success Movement Radio, and you are live right here with Sean Wyman on Praise 108 Radio, where we are all about voicing the gospel. Now, tonight, very excited get to have a dear friend of mine. I have been working on this guy and working on this guy. It's like, come on, man, you got to come on the show. We would have such an amazing time together. And finally, a month ago, he says, you know what? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. So I'm super excited because uh, my good friend, Gary Norris, is on with me tonight. Gary, welcome to the movement, man. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. Thank you, Sean, for having me. And I am the honored and blessed one here. I get to hang out with you for the next hour. Oh, man. So I am hearing some feedback, and I'm not sure where the feedback's coming from. Are you? Do you have your Facebook Live going? Me? Yeah, I'm hearing feedback from somewhere, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. No, I, I don't. I just got. I might have my speaker up a little okay. bit too loud. How about okay. now? All right, there we go. All right, so welcome everybody. Whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're watching on Periscope, Facebook Live, if you're on my personal Facebook page and you're watching on there, welcome, welcome, welcome. Turn off your Facebook. Okay, let me do that. That may be my problem, and I will turn it off. There we go. There we go. How's that, guys? We good? All right. Everybody on Facebook Live, I'm getting thumbs up and hearts over there, so it looks like we're good on that side, and we are good to go. All right. So, Gary, first, do us a favor, man. Just share a little bit about you and what you're all about, man. Um. I'm a Carolina boy. Uh, I am uh, based in Asheboro, North Carolina. Um, I have offices in Asheboro and Newton, North Carolina, which is right outside of Hickory. Um, I have uh, a company that works in the healthcare industry, assisting patients with no insurance or with high deductibles, giving them uh, connections with financial entities that can help them secure their care. Um, and give them affordable payments. We also provide installment plans for patients who don't have insurance. Uh, that, that company is called Northwind Companies. Um, I also uh, founded a company called Norris Ventures that works with entrepreneurs to help them launch their business um, and do so without debt. Uh, we're committed to <coughs> helping entrepreneurs launch without um, creating exorbitant amounts of debt um, yet get into their business. We shorten the distance between uh, day one and profitability so that they can survive. That and is that's, awesome, man. That's, that's a little awesome. bit about me. What's that? That's a little bit about me. Awesome, man. And so, and you know, you're so humble, man, because you're a best selling author. You have launched, uh, like, how many companies have you launched that, that have, have had success? A bunch. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch. A, a bunch. It's 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 been a lot. The Lord, the Lord has has get, uh, blessed me with the gift to be able to just see through the woods to the other side and and help entrepreneurs make it to the other side of their, their business dream. So um, we're just honored and, and humbled that that God's able to use us to capture to take back His marketplace, which I think we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. Absolutely. And I mean, and I think that's a great start point. I want to start, though, I want to get to know you a little bit more and talk a little bit about, you know, you're you growing up and, and stuff like that. So if you would just um, starting out, like, where'd you grow up at, man? Where are you originally from? Well, the name of the the name of my book is, is Dirt Road Doctorate. And I called it that because I was born on a dirt road in the mountains of North Carolina. And <clears throat> really, if you'd have seen me at, at Eight years old or nine years old, ten years old, you'd have thought, "Well, that kid, he's he's the rough road ahead," and that would have been accurate. Um, but the end of that story would be a whole lot different um, had it not been for the grace of God. Um, so I, I I grew up on a dirt road in the the, the, the mountains of North Carolina, and then at the age of twelve, we moved to Maryland, um, which you know um, we were neighbors and didn't even know it, buddy. I know. What part of Maryland um, were you at again? 
Uh, County, right north of Baltimore, just right below Pennsylvania and about 40 minutes north of the city. That's right. That's right. So we, um, my dad is a pastor. He took a church in, in Maryland and I stayed there until 2001 and moved back to North Carolina at that point. But um, when I was a senior in high school in Maryland, I, I was a I was a bowler. I played basketball. And for those of you who can't tell, I'm not very tall. I'm five foot six. Uh, so for a guy that's five foot six to be able to play basketball somewhat well, uh, that caught a lot of attention. So I was I secured a couple of scholarships to play basketball in college. Um, but during the senior year, my father was diagnosed with colon cancer, okay. and at the time they thought it would be terminal. And so being that my mom had never owned, had a job <clears throat> and it looked like being the oldest son, I would be responsible for taking care of my mom. I had to pass up on the scholarship. So I didn't get to go to school um, for a year there. Well, when I got out, when, when my dad went into remission, and I'm so glad that, that I made the decisions that I made when my dad went to remission. And he's still with us today, by the way. It's 1988. Tell you how old I am. Oh, wow. Um, he, he's still with us, still preaching. Um, I went back to the schools that offered me a basketball scholarship and, and too much time had lapsed. And so I couldn't take him up on a scholarship. So I went to work. I mean, that's what I had done for the, the last year. So I just, I, I just looked for ways to improve um, my, my work. So I never went to college. I took some night classes on real estate and, and worked my way through the school, schooling that I did get. But um, started my first business in uh, 89 and uh, the rest is history. Um, but that first business <clears throat> was a detailing company in Wilmington, Delaware, Sean. Okay. Yeah, I you know, know Wilmington. Okay, so I, w I went to, I took a five-gallon bucket. I, I Actually, I'll go back a little bit so your listeners can, can appreciate this as far as insight on, on business, starting a business. I went to one of my... Um, uh, someone I trusted a lot and I asked him, I said, I'm thinking about starting this business. Um, sh what, should I, go I'm thinking about starting this business. I want to go get all the equipment that I need to make it successful. What do you think? And he said, uh, I think you should make a mess first and then clean it up. Nobody ever cleans, uh, wipes off a clean counter. And right. I never, I never forgot that. Um, so are we good to go? We still yeah, going? you're good, man. You're good. I'm just, I'm working on some little technology things behind the scenes. You're good. Okay. So I went out to this high rise building with a five gallon bucket of water and some cleaning stuff. And I went, rode the elevator all the way to the top floor and walked into the first office on the right. And I said, I'm here cleaning cars today. Is there anyone who wants their cars cleaned? <clears throat> I didn't have business cards. I didn't have nothing. I right. five gallon of water, and I think I, I thought I knew how to clean a car. And she said, "You're cleaning cars." I said, "Yeah." She said, "Right here in the parking lot today." I said, "Yep." Yeah. She said, "While we work." I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "Hang on." And she turned around in her chair and said, "There's this guy out here who's cleaning cars while we work. Does anybody want their cars cleaned?" And keys came from every cubicle. <laughs> <on that floor. laughs> I was there for a solid week cleaning cars nice. and made a, made, made great money. Um, I was hooked after that and, uh, built that company up to be one of the largest cleaning companies in four States. Wow. So that, that's really how I got the entrepreneurial bug and started my journey of busted knuckles, um, entrepreneurial training. Absolutely, man. And, and your book goes into really great. I had the pleasure. I actually got the honor of reading the book before it actually was released, man. It was so exciting. And you even let me put an excerpt in there, which is really cool. But your book is so beautiful because it, it relates to your life, but it correlates back to your business. Like the, the lessons you learned from your life that you took and you applied to your business. And, and that was just really, really cool, man. Hey, thank you, Sean. It was, it was really a joy to write that book. And, and I've, I've gotten so many, um, so many compliments on just the way that the, the, the true life stories from my childhood, 
um, relate to to business, how I relate them to business. And that really is how God used my life to shape the way I see business and entrepreneurial ventures. Awesome. Awesome. So growing up, your dad's a pastor. So I, I'm assuming you grew up in, in a, a faith-based lifestyle, right? I did. I did. I sure did. Yep. I've, there are businessmen, business owners all, all in our family. Um, and even way back to my great grandfather, um, uh, Marlo and I were having this discussion the other day that uh, even my great grandparents were entrepreneurs in in the timber business. All of on both sides of my family, my mom and my dad, um, there are uh, sawmill men um, that uh, learned how to build businesses and and grow businesses in the woods. Um, so yeah. I grew up in a faith-based home and um, had the opportunity not only to see faith lived out, but also how faith impacts business. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so we're talking about kingdom marketplace. What, what does that mean to you, man? Because I know we've had some conversations about this, and this is a very special topic for you, right? It is. It really, it really is. You know, I think, Sean, one of the things that, that Christians <coughs> – one of the perspectives that Christians have is that the marketplace doesn't belong to us. We're visitors in the marketplace, guests, if you will, in someone else's marketplace. And when I had an opportunity to consult with Christian entrepreneurs and Christian, Christian business leaders, one thing that we have to start the ground up for us, uh, Sean, is that that marketplace belongs to God. It belonged to God at the beginning. Business, commerce, um, entrepreneurial endeavors, that was all God's idea. That's his idea. Um, uh, the marketplace has always been God's. We as the church, we as Christians have allowed the enemy to hijack God's marketplace. And now what we have left is this... Um, this other version of what God originally intended for the marketplace. And so we spend a lot of time calling Christian entrepreneurs to the front line to go into that marketplace and take it back for our father. Right. And one of the ways that we do that is we equip entrepreneurs. If you go onto my website, you'll see there's uh, one of the things that we do is uh, um, excellence, uh, daring and integrity. Um, we teach entrepreneurs and equip them to go into the marketplace and be the best and be excellent at what they do. You don't have to annihilate your competition to be the best. Um, we go into God's marketplace and we take back his marketplace in the name of Christ. There you go. So that's what when you say kingdom marketplace. That's exactly what I think of. I think of the marketplace that God intended for his people that we over the centuries have allowed to be hijacked by the enemy. And it's time for us to go back into it, take it back with authority. So, you know, for those of you that are listening, maybe you are looking at starting your own business. Maybe you've been hesitant. Maybe you've been afraid. Maybe you've been scared of taking that first step. Tonight is the night to move that into uh, move that into action. And I'm gonna, hopefully they're going to put the phone number up for us. But I'm also going to grab the phone number here as well so you guys can have the phone number. You guys can call into the show and speak directly to Gary. And I'm telling you, this is a huge opportunity. This is one of the business, busiest men on the planet, man. He is a difficult guy to get a hold of. So to get this guy for an hour for his undivided attention to share with you his expertise, please, 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 if this is a great opportunity. And you can call in the telephone number. 478-787-0993. 478-787-0993. And you can speak to my good friend Gary Norris live, and he can answer your questions about getting started in the Kingdom Marketplace. So, Gary, with that being said, man, what is the biggest mistake that you see new entrepreneurs making? And I think you talked about it a little bit as far as 
um, being worried about dominating the competition. But is that the biggest mistake? Or what do you think the biggest mistake is that people are making getting started today? It's one nasty four-letter word. Debt. Mm. It's debt. It's debt. I tell all of the people that I get to work with, even people that I don't get to work with, the first thing that people think of when they think of, I want to start a business or I've got an idea that I think will work, is they think, okay, now I've got my 58-page business plan written. I'm going to take it down to the local bank or to an investor, and I'm going to get them to give me some money to get this started. And the problem with that scenario is this, and I want everybody to hear me very closely. Um, here it is. If you do that, if you launch your business that way, the first person to touch your profits is your lender. Mm. You're going to go out and you're going you're gonna to bust your knuckles. You're going to work like a dog every day to get that business started. And the first person to touch your profits from your hard work is the lender or the investor. And every people ask me all the time, well, what kind of what kind of bank should I look for? What kind of loan should I apply for? What kind of investor should I look for? Well, my answer to that, Sean, is this: the only kind of investor and the only kind of banker that you should use is the one that shows up Monday morning with his sleeves rolled up at six a.m. and says, "Let's go to work." Right. That's the kind of that's the kind of debt you can handle. Right. Your debt works for you. Go for it. Right. That, 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 that nine times out of 10, that debt just waits around for you to make the payment. So what payment. are some alternatives then, Gary? What are some alternatives for people? Because I know, I'm, I, I mean, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, all right, man. So you're saying, I mean, you need money, right? You need money to start a business. You need you, some you, financial you, backing. So what so, are some ideas to do that? So, so what, it's what I call bootstrapping. And a lot of people, when they say bootstrapping, bootstrapping means go to Uncle Tom or, or, or Aunt Nellie and say, hey, guys, I'm thinking about starting this business. I hope you love me enough to give me some money to, to get this. You believe in me. Here's my dream. Here's my vision. Give me, write me a check. Well, that's all well and good, but I've seen a lot of families have fallings out, falling, falling out. Yeah. Over there, and, and I don't ever recommend that. It's, it's a principle that I call net, not debt. Okay. What I mean by that is, and we can talk about this too with business feasibility, if you'll, you'll determine what it is you want to do. Do you want to do a service? Do you want to provide a product? What is it that you want to do? <clears throat> Once you identify that, then you have to identify what vendors or what partners are you going to need to help you bring that to fruition, you're going to need, you're going to need, if it's a service, there's people that are going to have to need to come alongside you to help you make that service, bring that service to market. If it's a product, there are elements that go into your product typically, typically they're going to help you bring that product to market. So one of the things that we do is we go to the vendors that it takes to make your product or service come to life and we explain to them, listen, um, we would like to negotiate with you terms for the products and services that it's going to take for us to come to market. And they're naturally going to say, well, how do I know your business is going to live? And this is where what I call LOIP comes in. This is a letter of intent to purchase. This goes way back to where you call the people that you think are your customers, Sean, and right. you have an honest conversation with them about, about their interest in your product or service. And there's three cru crucial questions that you ask that prospective customer, that prospective client. And right. that is, that those three questions are these. And if your callers want one of these, they can email you and ask you for them and I'll, I'll send them to you, okay? Okay. This, this is business visibility 101. This is, can my business live or does my idea suck? Is it a bad idea? Should I just keep my day job? All right, so here's those three questions. The first one is, is my product or service something you are buying or would buy? Okay. Question, question number one. Question number two, how often are you buying or would you buy my product or service? Question number three, 
how much are you paying or would you pay for my product or service? You can get your prospects to answer those three questions. They've just built your business for you. They've told you their interest. They've told you their reorder frequency. Mm -hmm. And they've told you how much they're going to pay. They've you given you a price point for your product or service. Right. Okay. You get those three answers. And once they answer those, you bring your product or service to them and say, okay, you said you answered my three questions and now I'm going to ask you for them. I'm going to ask you for a letter of intent to purchase. It's an LYP. And that's your commitment that when I bring this to you, this thing that you said you need and are buying or would buy at this price point, that you're going to buy it from me. Right. You take five of those letter, letters of intent to purchase to your vendors and you say, here's the proof that my business will live. I have customers waiting for this product. Or service. I need 90 days, Mr. Vendor. I need 90 days to go out, earn the revenue, and in 90 days, I'm going to come back and not only pay you for what I've used, but I'm going to pre-order my next 90 days worth. Oh, wow. Bless you. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost. You're a, trip, You're a trip. You should let that out. I will. We're buddy. You can let that I out. I know. So say those three questions again, Gary. Because I know that I know that that's that's value right there, man. Three questions that every every entrepreneur should be asking. The first question is: Are you would or would you buy my product or service? Right. Second one is: How often are you buying or would you buy my product or service? Right. And what what are you paying or would you pay for my product or service? Okay. Those are the three questions. Keep going, Gary. We're good, man. I just got to plug something in real quick. Good. Those, those three questions are what will help you secure an LOIP, which you take to your vendors and you negotiate net terms on the things it's going to take to bring you to market. Gotcha. Man, that is – I've never heard that. And, I'm, and you know, I've, I've, been, I've been around the business world for a little while. I'm not definitely not as versed as you are, but – I know that that has got to be pure gold for some people out there to, you know, you know, they're asking, well, where do I start? How do I begin? What should, what are the questions I should be thinking of? So great, great, great information. So what are, what do you think are some of the top kingdom marketplace business opportunities that are out there right now? Gosh, there's a ton. There, I see new business, uh, business models every week. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that, that there's a limit on what what opportunities Christian business people can capitalize on. Right. Um, I just want I just want to make sure that your listeners are doing your homework because the problem the problem in the marketplace, especially for for, for a faith based entrepreneur, whether the business is faith based or not, but someone who launches out in the marketplace as a believer, as a person of faith, is a lot of times they will do, they'll launch out of their business in mediocrity. And I want to equip entrepreneurs to do everything that they do, what they set their hands to do with, with, with great levels of excellence. We don't have to be second place. And anybody who knows me knows that if I'm going to step my hand to the plow, I'm going to come in first. Right. I did it in, intending to come in first. Did I come in first every time? No. I've had businesses that didn't that didn't make it. I had businesses that failed, but I did not set my hand to the plow to come in second. I launched out to be excellent, and I wish to goodness that I had had an entrepreneurial coach like myself to help me along in some of those early ventures because I could have saved myself a whole lot of problems. I just wish somebody would have would have had those honest conversations with me about debt, about how to do market feasibility how to test the marketplace, how to talk to prospects. Um, really, it was those principles that helped me launch Northwind. I called a hospital and I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking I want to do. If I did this, would you buy it? And how much would you pay? And how often do you use it? I built the entire company around that kind of conversation with, with healthcare providers. Right. That's beautiful, man. 
So excellence. Uh, uh, just if whatever it is you're getting, you know, the scripture says, whatever you set your hand to do, do as it do it as unto the Lord. And what that means is worship. You're going to set your hand to do it. Do it as unto the Lord as worship. And let's pause right there, Gary. Let's take our break right there because when okay. we come back, we'll start. We'll follow up some more on that, guys. You are listening to 108 Praise Radio with Sean Wyman and my special guest Gary Norris. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Hey, Sean. Yep, hang on. It's still, um, I want to make sure we're all. At times I feel like giving up. I ain't never giving up. I found what I'm living for, living for. Still I ride. That slum life, seeing shining like prom night. I do it if you do it. Do anything for that Klondike. Childhood like Mike. Cause everything starting to fade away till I'm searching for this Jesus cat. And my mom prayed to every day. Heard the word but didn't pay attention. Went to church and still thought about sinning. Like, look at her with that dress on. I must admit, I was a mess home. Two piece with my vest on. Cleaner than the whole Deacon boy. They ain't know that it would hand me down. Big bro with trill on that iron boy. Me and God was on different. Different pages, different DJ, different stations Never knew that in 20 years he would use me to represent the kingdom And now my family proud, and my city proud And I'ma make them proud, now play that chorus loud At times I feel like giving up, I ain't never giving up I found what I'm living for, living for Still I ride To myself, treated life like a gang, playing Russian roulette. Keisha, Kim, and Tanya, probably three of the best, but still they wasn't enough. I'm wondering who's next. Living life on the edge, thinking about myself, worrying about my health, but too scared to take the test. Had to pray hard about it, cause it was on me hard. Addicted to it, my only deliverance was God. And though I change sometimes, I think about my past. But I can smile about it, because I'm free at last. At times I feel like giving up, I ain't never giving up. I found what I'm living for, living for, still I ride. All right, Arthur, you're up. Paul and Silas was wrapped up in that Roman jail. Had nobody to go there bail. Silas said, you preach, and Paul said, I was saying. And just about that hour, something happened. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour when the Roman guards go to sleep. So I can talk to my heavenly father Up in heaven, on the throne He's the only one I know That can save and deliver my soul In the midnight hour, yeah In the midnight hour, yeah 
welcome back, everybody. Sean Wyman here. You are listening to Success Movement Radio tonight. My special guest, Gary Norris, CEO of Norris Ventures, and also an amazing, amazing author. And we have had a great time already talking about some really interesting topics when it comes to the kingdom marketplace. Uh, we've already shared. If you if you're just jumping on, make sure you go back and you check out the replay. Um, Gary's already shared some very very valuable information for somebody that's getting started as an entrepreneur. Sharing the key key questions that you should be asking every single time before you launch a business. Before you um, talk about how to keep yourself from going in debt when you get started in business. So. Definitely go back and check out the replay if you haven't done so already. And Gary, how you doing, man? Can you hear me okay? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So welcome back, Gary. Look, man, we're going to jump right back into it because this was really, really good. And when we finished, we finished at the end where we were talking about your work should be identical to your worship. And I really want you to break that down for us, Gary, and help us to understand that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so... I mentioned before the break that scripture says, whatever you do, whatever you set your hand to do, do it as unto the Lord. And what that really is saying is that your work should be part of your worship. So what, what I always say to entrepreneurs who are believers is this, check your worship next to your work and if monday morning looks different than sunday morning there's something wrong with your arithmetic what i mean by that is sometimes in in, in business you're going to be on your knees sometimes in business you're going to have your hands raised and praise sometimes in business you're going to see the favor of god and experience the intimate presence of your creator Sometimes in business, you're going to feel like he's a million miles away. Sometimes in business, you're, you're just going to need to allow God to search you and try your heart. But if there's any different response, any different offering on Monday morning than there is on Sunday morning, you're probably doing the wrong thing. Mm. There should not be any difference. I check myself with this. My Monday, and I don't always get it right, but my Monday morning should look just like my Sunday morning. Complete with, with seasons of prayer, complete with seasons of weeping, complete with, with seasons of, of deep and intimate friendship with God. Um, and rejoicing in tribulation, rejoicing in, in, in the struggle. Recognizing the favor of God in my business. You know, I, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. If we know how to give our children good gifts, how will our Father not give us good gifts when we ask him? If we're going to say that it's kingdom marketplace, if we're going to say that it's God's marketplace, and it is, then when we are thriving in that marketplace, when we are walking in excellence in that marketplace, when we are taking back the marketplace that belongs to our God, you can not be in any more ardent position of worship than in that moment when you are representing as an ambassador of Jehovah in the marketplace that belongs to him as an entrepreneur of excellence. Enough said. There's not a lot more to say, man. That's that's just that's hitting it right on point. And you know, I, I'm thinking because there's so many directions I could go with this, but I want to go into, you know, if 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 the kingdom marketplace is such a flourishing place and it's a place where God wants us, why are so many people a slaves to working for somebody else? You know, is that is that something that the devil created? You know, a lot of people have this philosophy about money and that money is evil. And and it just seems and, you know, as well as I do, the devil loves to create chaos so he can move 
without being uh, without being identified, right? So he'll he'll create this big ruckus, this big chaos about certain topics, and then he'll he'll slide right around while nobody's paying attention. So, what are your thoughts on that, man? Why are more? Why are if it's so important, right? What are what are some things we can do? Even if you're just let's say that you're an employee right now, and you're going, all right. I'm hearing what this guy's saying. I understand that God doesn't want me to work for somebody else. He wants me. And it goes with the rule, right? Don't serve two masters. So how does somebody start to break away from that? Well, let's identify what would prevent them from, from following the call of God. All right. Can we do that? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's start there because I think we're going to hit some people at home. I think we're going to hit home some folks if we just identify but it would what, what what types of things would prevent someone from stepping out of the boat? Okay. If, okay. Um, so let's clarify this about the marketplace really quick. The enemy's got nothing original of his own except lies and rebellion. That's I mean that's what he's got. That's what he's good at. That's all he's got. He don't have nothing original, and I can't take credit for that. Um, I have to tell you, Marlo. Caroline girl that was on the, she, she said that yesterday. I love Marlo, you know, man. She's great. She's amazing. Um, the enemy has nothing original. Um, he has to take God's original and counterfeit it. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and make his own version of God's original. And so what we see in the marketplace today is we see greed. We see manipulation. We see Taking advantage of the weak. Yeah, intimidation, right? We see intimidation. We see cutthroat practices. We see uh, all manner of things that are not becoming to a child of God. That's what we see. Right. And, and so we look at it from the outside as an entrepreneur, an employee with an entrepreneurial spirit. And we say, gosh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can go out into that, that counterfeit and, and make it. So I've got to fight all that that I just named. I've got to I've got to overcome all that stuff, right? Um, and I don't want to play ball like them. I don't want to talk bad about my competition. I don't I, I don't want to steal money and overprice my products and services. I, I don't I don't want to to put slander on my Facebook feed about the guy down the street who's doing similar things. Why can't I just be the best and that be good enough for me to get business and grow a business? I'm just not sure. Just not sure. People just not sure. So they look at the enemy's version of God's original and they say, yeah, I can't thrive in that. Yes, you're correct. You cannot thrive in the enemy's economy. Mm. You weren't created to thrive in the enemy's economy. Let me just clarify the difference between God's marketplace, kingdom marketplace, and, and what we see every day, what we probably work in every day. That employee is probably sitting there going, gosh, I know what my boss does. I can't be like that. And if that's what it takes to be like him, I'm out. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing until I can't do nothing else. Man, you just hit, you just hit something hard, man, because I can't tell you how many times I have looked at certain opportunities and I've seen the way people came, the way they approached. And I was exactly like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. if that's what I got to do to do that. There's yeah. no way I'm going to do that. Mm -mm. No, if that's what success looks like in this marketplace, then I'm out. I don't want it. I don't want, I want any part of that. So to clarify all of that, I think the first thing that we encounter is fear. Fear. Yeah. So what do we know from scripture? If we're just going to use the truth, forget what I say. I'm just falling like everybody else on this show. Let's use truth. So let's take the only absolute truth that we have in our lives, and that's the word of God. Let's just take that right there. What is the one thing that we know obliterates fear? Are you uh, asking me? <laughs> is this a test? I, I'm going to help you. I know everybody... Around me, they're like, oh, gosh, Gary's going into trivia mode again. He's asking questions. I'll answer it for you. I would say faith. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i take a guess. I'll say faith. Perfect love casts out all fear. Okay. Perfect love. Perfect love 
casts out all fear. Okay. Can I unpack that for just a second? We, we, we might have church for just, just a minute. Can I unpack We've that? We've been in church, man. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we all got 10 minutes, so I'll try and make it brief. You got 10 minutes, yeah. Okay, so perfect love means that, Sean, I'm going to love you no matter what. Right. I'm going to love you. Doesn't matter what you do. You see, Jesus loved me when I was yet a sinner. So right. I am called and mandated by the love I have received to love you the same way. Yep. If I love you any other way, Sean, I don't love you. You with me? Yeah, I oh, know. I'm with you. Okay, so take that love into the marketplace. Okay. Okay. And now I'm not afraid of nobody. That love, that unconditional love, that unconditional existing in a place where it does not exist, it destroys fear. If you can look at your marketplace with perfect love, you can step out of that boat and you can walk all the way to Christ and take him by the hand and walk on the same water he's walking on right now. It's when we begin to look at our enemies or our competition and say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. They, they've got all this equipment. They've got all these trucks. They've got all these tools. They've got all this stuff. They've got social media. They've got the website. They've got all of these things. And now they become something that would keep me from receiving favor from my father. Right. The favor of God is not contingent upon what is around you. It's contingent upon your friendship and intimacy with him. David said in the Psalms, he said, the friendship of God is reserved for those he selects. It's dependent upon friendship with God. So fear, fear keeps us from stepping out into the marketplace. Um, another thing that prevents us from stepping out of the marketplace is um, feelings of inadequacy. Feeling like we don't have the right equipment or the right tools to do what we feel like we need to do. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs I sit with and they say, I just don't, I just don't have what I need to do it. And that's what leads them into debt. Right. Um, we have been given, if you're called to that, if you're called to that marketplace with that product or service by your creator, then he has equipped you to go in with excellence. So I think fear and feelings of inadequacy keep most employees from stepping out of the boat into entrepreneurial endeavors. What do you think about, and let me ask you this, because I think about Solomon a lot as we're talking about this, right? And, and Solomon was one that um, God came to him at some point and said, you know what? Ask for anything and I'll give it to you. And he could have asked for anything. He could have asked for all the riches. He could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for anything. And what does he ask for? The knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. You know, he wanted to be a smart person, right? And, and I think a lot of people think about business as just money or just making a living or just... And, 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 and they don't think about it as a ministry, whereas people that come into the kingdom marketplace that are that are serving with the right heart, with, with, with full love, like you're talking about, are coming into this with a much bigger perspective than that. What are your thoughts? Well, I, 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 I mean, I do agree. I do. I do understand that. That there are several things that 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 we have to we have to overcome, we have to face, um, and we have to work our way through. Um, but it, it, it's God's marketplace, Sean. It's His. We we've just we've just allowed it to be uh, taken over by the enemy, and you know it's not money is not the problem. It's needing the money or loving the money more than you love the people. It's loving the money that your customers pay more than you love your customer. That's the problem. Right. 
Your customers will walk through fire to get to you to buy your products and services if they believe for one second that they are the are the, uh, the commerce, that they are the commodity, that they are the reason why you do what you do and not the deposit. Mm. It's never about the deposits. It's never about the, the money. It's always about making sure that your customers realize that they're the reason you do what you do. That's one of the things that creates a level of excellence that you won't find in the marketplace. Wow. And that's, that's, that's a good place to, kill, to, to end it, man, because unfortunately we're coming to the end and I want to make sure that I give you some time to share a little bit about how people can connect with you. And uh, obviously that's something that you, you have a whole team of people that actually works with people, right. That are trying to get up off the ground, get started. So for those, I mean, we probably have, I don't know, 45, 50, maybe even 60,000 people that are listening right now. How would somebody connect with you or connect with your team to find out whether they're, you know, they're in the right place or the right time to uh, get started in the kingdom marketplace. Well, I think the probably the most effective way to get a hold of us, Sean, is through NorrisVentures.com. Okay. Um, there's a contact form on there that comes straight to my inbox, and it goes to all of our teams' inboxes. They can, they will, they will, uh, they'll get the uh, inquiry. Just let us know what it is that you're needing and how you think we can help and. Um, all of our all of our uh, consultants are on project right now. I was just telling a guy yesterday, um, but you know I will get involved as much as I can um, to position entrepreneurs for success. And, and if we need to take the next step with you and coach you, we'll we'll, we'll do that as quickly as we can. Um, but the best way to reach us is through NorrisVentures.com. And that's N O R R I S Ventures B E N T U R E S dot com. You got it. Got it. Got you it. Got it. Hey, Sean, let me say one more thing. Sure. When we talk about God's favor, oftentimes we discount or we try to eliminate God's favor in the struggle. And I want your listeners to understand that God's favor is found in the struggle, too. Hmm. God's favor is found in the struggle too, not just in the times of prosperity. You're right. Um, you know, we're not promised no furnaces. We're not promised no affliction. We're not promised no pain or struggle. What we are promised is that no matter what, he will never leave us or forsake us. We're promised that I will be with you even to the end of the world. We're promised if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there. We're promised that if we go to the furnace heated seven times hotter than any other furnace in the history of mankind, that when the enemy looks down into that fire, he's going to see the form of a fourth and that will be the son of God. He will be with us in the fire. Gary, man, it has been such an honor having you on this show tonight, man. Thank you so much for finally saying yes, man. I'm so, uh, I knew we were going to have a great show, man. And I can't thank you enough, my friend. Uh, it's been my honor, Sean. It's been my honor. And I'm humbled that you would ask me to come on here and uh, rattle on about things I'm passionate about. Hey, we got to get Marlo on here too, man, because Marlo yes, would be fire. Do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, Marlo. Marlo's one I got to go after next. So tell her I'm coming. <laughs> I'll tell her. <laughs> All right, Gary. Hey, thank you so much, man. Greatly appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Norris, CEO of Norris Ventures. Hey, and they can get your book, right? They can. It's on Amazon for a doctorate. It will make you smile, but it will also, I think, and pray, uh, inspire you. Uh, in business principles. It is a beautiful book, a beautiful book. And you got another one coming out, don't you? You're, you're like a book writing machine, man. I do. I have another one coming out called um, Talk to Me, The Power of Conversational Sex. Yes, I cannot wait to read that one, man. I'm super <laughs> excited about that one. Super excited. Gary, thank you again. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, everybody, for listening tonight. This has been Success Movement Radio with Sean Wyman right here on 108 Praise Radio, where we are all about voice in the gospel. And listen, don't go anywhere because the amazing Cynthia Turner is going to be turning it up on 108 Praise Radio in just a few minutes. So thank you guys so much. Remember, no matter what, always keep moving forward. I believe at some point in time, everybody goes through a life-changing experience. When the sunlight melts the snow. You know, the hardest part about the truth is Every just knowing the difference between right and wrong. And when you actually have an experience with God, it's hard to ever get over it. They say with the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. I just pray for God to grant me wisdom. In conversations with demons, they're standing right there Invading my mind and screaming, I pray to God Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me Cause I can feel these evil spirits creeping, lurking on me There's so much nervousness and tension within me My palms are sweating and empty, so many problems against me I told the devil, don't tempt me, I'm empty It's simply the life that I'm living I want a wife and some children, a brand new ride and some millions But I won't never get it, because I'm living in sin I grew up in the hood, all we know is getting it in And I believe it's right, like Stevie Wonder, I can't see the light I know the only way that's right is just to follow Jesus Christ It seems so hard, I see no hope It seems so far, though I know it's so close Not only did they beat him, they crucified him too So I surrender now, God I give my life to you Sometimes it can be easy to get off track. Sometimes it can be easy to forget that God's still there. But he's always there. Yeah, we do it for the Lord, but we're gonna dedicate this one intensely to Tensley too. Beef, but rest in peace. It in, deep in sin, yeah, you know I gotta get cleansed Bottom of the laundry bin, got throw me in the wash again Hiding secrets from my kin, paying strippers with these tens Hiding secrets from my friends, at least I'm gonna make it in That ain't gonna work, gotta get right before I'm in that hearse Change like what's in the bottom of your purse So sin sick that I need a nurse Jesus has to come first, or I'm stuck Since my adolescence, here's the question